expresses worry over impending flood. Police dismiss two personnel over culpable homicide in Adamawa. Benue youths embrace entrepreneurship as panacea to poverty. And on the foreign scene, Russia vetoes United Nations resolution on Mali. Well, hello there, good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. We start in Plateau State as residents of Tudun Otsi, a flown prone community of just north local government area of Plateau State, are expressing concern over the expected flooding that may affect the area after Cameroon released water from its Lato Dam. The federal government had predicted that 11 states will be afflicted, affected by flood waters arising from the release of water from the Lato Dam in Cameroon within the next seven days. Ado Musa has more from Plateau State. In Plateau State, about four local government areas, including Just North, Shandam, Lantan North, and Lantan South, are flood front areas. And communities in these areas are often affected by the flood during rainy season. Residents of Tudung Osi in Just North local government area say they are worried about the expected flood, adding that last year they were devastated by the flood disaster. There is no place people will go had it been people has an alternative. They will leave the place. But you know how people are suffering in Nigeria, what they will eat. That is why people build their houses here before the river bank. So the, you see, the flooding is not occurring always. It is occurring at least maybe in 10 years, one or two times. That will affect many people. But uh, the usual one is not affecting people. That is why people continue sitting there. My worry is that some of the days that have the ploughing coming in our community, our parents are, are going out to go and find the food or the shelter that we are eating. Many of our parents, especially our fathers, they are not around. We sit with our mothers and our younger sister in the house, so we are very worried about it. Actually, we have been facing a very good number of challenges, more especially during raining season without even the releasing the what these people our neighboring country have been saying that they are going to release the their own dam to come the people around the river area that they should back it. actually if they release this uh dam is going to bring a number of casualties and uh, actually it will make some damages within the community the executive director of the state emergency management agency speaks on what effort the agency is making to mitigate this year's anticipated flood in the state. Information channels where we share these informations with the local government. Because you know the local governments are where these things really happen. And so we share information with them and they too in turn via their other uh, outfits, you know, inform the people on what to do and how to uh, face the challenges when they eventually occur. The executive director also blames people who build on waterways for the perennial flooding. We also encourage people not to filter, I mean, litter the drainages. One reason why you find flood easily is when the waterways are blocked. And Nigerians are so, I don't know, but we, we are used to throwing garbages in the waterways. And that causes friction. And you know water is a force. When it comes, it follows, it parts. And anything that is stopping it, it creates a path for itself. Hence the word flooding. The federal government had directed the state to evacuate or relocate people from the flood front areas after receiving information on the release of water from Lado Dam in Cameroon. 
Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. In other flood-related news, Yobe State Government has expressed its commitment to review its modalities on the evacuation of residents in vulnerable communities to safer places to avoid loss of life and property as a result of flooding. The Executive Secretary of the Yobe State Emergency Management Agency, Goje Muhammad, stated this during the distribution of food items to 6,800 beneficiaries in Portuskum local government area of the state. He said the release of water from Lagdo Dam in Cameroon had underscored the need for states to immediately evacuate residents from flood-prone communities to safer places. According to him, the agencies have sensitized the traditional and religious leaders to alert the affected communities at risk, adding that the agency has set up measures to evacuate all residents at risk to higher grounds. He added that the agency is well prepared for the impending flood as directed by Governor Maimala Buni. In Adamao State, the State Police Command has dismissed a police inspector and a constable for alleged culpable homicide and unlawful use of authority contrary to the Police Act. The police spokesperson in the state, Suleiman Groje, said this in a statement in Yola, the state capital, explaining the command carried out administrative investigation and subsequently found the police officers wanting as charged. The command tried Inspector Ahmed Suleiman and Police Constable Mahmoud Mohammed, formerly attached to Dumne Divisional Police Headquarters in, the orderly, in an orderly room trial. Now, the statement says the command found them guilty as charged and recommended the punishment of dismissal for both defaulters they are to be charged to court alongside other court suspects. Now, police commissioner in the state, Afolabi Babatola, warned officers and men of the command to be punctual and shown all offences against their discipline. And the police in Aquaribum State on Wednesday paraded a fake engineer, Felix Anite Udo, for who supervised the construction of a collapsed four-story building in the state. Parading the suspect along with others arrested for various crimes, including kidnapping and murder, the commissioner of police in the state, Olatwe Durusimi, says the fake engineer was arrested by operatives of the state anti-robbery squad of the command on August 7 while trying to flee the scene. A police commissioner who noted that the collapsed building led to the death of one person while five persons were rescued, while adding that the suspect and others will be prosecuted soon. The commissioner says during an interrogation, the suspects confessed to being a builder and not an engineer. The commissioner of police assured the people that the command would remain committed to the provision of top-notch security across Aquaribum State and called on indigents of the state to volunteer information that could lead to the arrest of criminal elements across the state. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has facilitated the return of $26,000 to Christine Brown, a British national and a victim of internet fraud. The EFCC spokesperson, Wilson Owujaran, said this in a statement in Abuja, adding that the Benin Zone, Zonal Command handed over the money to the victim on Monday. According to him, Brown expressed gratitude to the Commission for its efforts, which she said has brought some circa to her after losing her life savings to the Frosters. She said, he said that the 70-year-old had petitioned the Commission after being defrauded by an internet Froster through a romance scam. Narrating her ordeal, Brown says she became a victim after she met a purported John Barrowman an entertainer and citizen of America online. Now, according to Ojaren, unknown to her, he was a froster who later began to demand money, which she sent through wire transfers, Bitcoin, and gift cards. Now, Kanu Idagu, the zonal commander, while handing over the recovered funds, said the commission will continue to discharge its mandate to the betterment of society. And he also admonished uh, members of the public to, uh, to be circumspect whenever they do online business as frosters prowl the internet seeking to defraud unsuspecting victims. Now, the federal government 
and its initiative to tackle the security and economic challenges in northern Niger, particularly in the northwest, is set to be underway. The Vice President, Senator Kashim Shatima, stated this during a meeting with the Coalition of Northern States Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture at the Presidential Villa in Abuja. Members of the group who were led by, to the meeting the vice president by the president of the group al hatu abubakar the vice president during the meeting says the north needs re-engineering and re-strategizing to fast track development in the region the Polaku initiative is a robust solution towards addressing the challenges in the northwestern part of the country it is a solution aimed at addressing the challenges of armed banditry kidnapping and the situation in northwest which cannot be divorced from the issue of governance. Also at the State House, traditional leaders from Nasarawa State, led by the chairman of the Nasarawa State Traditional Council, retired Justice Sidi Bage, paid a visit to the Vice President, during which the Vice President commended the role of the traditional rulers in the promotion of cultural heritage across the country. In other news, the Minister of Interior, Bumi Tunji Ojo, says President Bola Tinubu has issued an order for the recapture of all fugitives across the country. Between 2021 and 2022, there were at least seven attacks on custodial centers across the country where many inmates escaped from custody. The seven attack custodial centers include Kuje, Kogi, Jos, Abologo, Oweri, Okitipupa, and Oko prisons. To date, about 4,000 inmates remain at large. Addressing journalists after the inspection of the facilities at the Nigeria Immigration Service and the Nigeria Correctional Service on Wednesday, Tunji Ojo says the service would work hard to ensure the order given by the president on fleeing inmates is followed to the letter. Now, he also said the Nigeria Correctional Service would work in collaboration with the security agencies in the country to recapture all fugitives. Earlier at the Nigeria Immigration Service, the minister vows to review all existing agreements to improve the efficiency of the service. He said he would also set up a team that would review, adding that those agreements were holding the service back in actualizing its mandates. Journalists have been charged on the need to be well informed on budget tracking an investigation for transparency and accountability in governance for the development of the nation. Chairman Daily Trust Foundation Biliabala made the call while declaring open a three-day training exercise on budget tracking and investigation training organized for journalists drawn from across southwestern Nigeria by Daily Trust Foundation in collaboration with MacArthur Foundation in Akure, the Ondo State Capital. Abbas Ibrahim Dalibi has more. Journalists from various organizations were selected for the training. The chairman urged participants to make the best use of the opportunity provided by the training. There is nothing more important after the Nigerian constitution other than budget tracking and implementation. It is the responsibility of the media to follow up and see what has been budgeted for. Has it been implemented? Have there been the resources to implement it? And to what extent has it been implemented? So the entire development of the country rests squarely on the implementation of its budget. He laid emphasis on the need for journalists to be vast in budget tracking and have capacity to investigate budget implementation. On those state commissioner for economic planning and budget, Pastor Emmanuel Igbosan restates calls for journalists to ensure the budget spending are accounted for. The expectation from the journalists is that you now have a better understanding of the functionality of government and you can now ask the right questions and you can now go to the right places to get the right answers for your or for the benefit of the masses and you now know that you occupy a very critical realm in the in the in the committee of um, nations to develop in even in development uh, process on those state commissioner for information and orientation by midele ademola olateju who speaks on what the state has done in budget tracking 
commended the effort of Daily Trust Foundation and MacArthur Foundation for training journalists across the country. It's important for people to know what is the budget performance of a government. Where are they spending their money? It is very important and I think my colleague, the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, will be able to give an account of himself and train you on how to get that done. Journalists from the Northwest, Northeast and South-South had earlier participated in the budget tracking and investigation training. A similar training will also take place in Southeast. Abbas Ibrahim Alibi, Trust TV, Lagos. Well, you're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up ahead after the break. We take a look at how youths are embracing entrepreneurship as a way out of poverty. More news coming up ahead after the break. Hello and welcome to Book Review on Trust TV, where we talk to African and international authors. You see if you're reading a Chino Achebe book, yeah. you can almost hear the Igbo behind the English. From memory, I was able to come up with that. Of course, I also had to do research, you know, I tried to tie it to colonial era. I wanted to show the impact they had in the, uh, on the Fulani culture mm -hmm. when they came. Teacher librarians are those who are librarians, but they also teach. They teach the use of library, the use of books. Because if you don't teach you know, these children, make it part of them, you know, they will not be in love with it. And then you have to select you know, the kind of book that would encourage them to read. Welcome back to the news update. Here's a quick recap of our top stories at this hour. Plateau community expresses fear over impending flood in communities. Police dismiss two personnel over culpable homicide in Adamawa. Some of the day's other news now, members of the public have, have emphasized the need for youths to embrace entrepreneurship to complement the government's efforts in job creation in order to mitigate Nigeria's increasing rate of unemployment. Now, this view was expressed by a cross-section of residents in Jailingu, Ditaraba State Capital, who spoke with Trust TV on what needs to be done to reduce the rate of crime and criminality in the society. One of the promises made by the governor of Taraba State, Agbu Kefas, in his inaugural address to the state was that of job creation for youths and women. In fulfillment of that promise, the Taraba State government has successfully commenced processes for the recruitment of both graduates and undergraduates into the state's employ. Efforts to speak with the commissioner for cooperative and poverty eradication were not successful. For Mark Tukur, Obed Titus and Elizabeth Stephen Lacroix, who spoke with Trust TV, they want the youth not to depend on government for white-collar jobs, but rather acquire skills or venture into business in order to earn a decent living instead of staying idle. Governor Abukefas has come in uh, from the ongo, the little days he has done in office, much is expected from him. I don't want to brag that he will do because we make this same bragging on the past administration and nothing happened. Some of the women who are into tailoring, bags making, barbing and other businesses also stress the need for young ladies to take up different trades instead of depending on their husbands or government. My advice to the youth out there, you shouldn't depend on white collar jobs. You have to engage on something to do. You can imagine the hunger these days, ah, my brother. If the rest are not hearing me, I'm hearing it all. Honestly, it has not been easy. Engage in something that will fetch you money. Do not depend on government works. My advice to them is for them to get something doing. They should not say I do. They should not be reluctant and 
get something a handwork to do they should engage themselves in doing something they should not wait for government though government have promised that they will provide a job for the youth but we should not sit down and wait for the government for adam Azaya, waiting for white collar jobs will not stop them from running their businesses and vice versa white collar job is good Yes, you go to school because you want to acquire a white collar job is good, but you also have to learn the skills. We have tailoring, we have barbing, you have, like me, I am a barber. So we barb and then we do a lot of things here. So I am calling on the youth of our dear state, Taraba, that you should look for something, get the handwork to do, to encourage yourself. They called on the state government to fulfill its promise of creating jobs for women and youth, noting that youth unemployment is the major factor that gives rise to insecurity in the state. In a similar vein, graduates in Benue State have been urged to embrace self-employment through the acquisition of skills and turn away from an over-reliance on government jobs that are not readily available. Now, this is coming on the heels of Nigeria's endemic battle with unemployment as millions of youths across the country remain unemployed. Jimmy Azande reports. The methodology used by the National Bureau of Statistics, counting people who work for just an hour in a week, has employed generated controversy. But that is not what bothers the residents here. They are more concerned about the youths who are graduates of higher institutions waiting for jobs in public service. Um, I feel and I think it's necessary or it's important for students to have a skill or um, be self-employed upon um, graduation because if you are depending on your white scholar job, it's not before you and eh, it's not before you seriously but I just feel that as a student, just know something, learn a skill, learn a handwork. To me, looking at the issue of our country, the state of our country this time or nowadays, to me, I think proper qualification is not the best solution this, uh, to our youth. Um, there are a lot of uh, skills acquisition that our youth can involve, which they can earn more, but which can earn them more better. Because if you look around, there are no industries in our country and we have vibrant young who have graduated from our universities with A, with first class, second class upper and they are, they are about roaming on the street. So I encourage that our youth should not just focus on paper qualification. Some of the unemployed graduates are already facing the consequences of their actions or inactions. Students are supposed to be self-employed after or upon graduation because I'm an immediate graduate of Benue State University, Department of English, and as I graduate, I've come to face a lot of challenges and I've come to the realization that life is beyond what we see and everything is not the way it seems. Back then, when I was still in the university, I feel that people who are outside there are doing quite well. Some of my classmates engage into entrepreneurship. There's a one of my guys that was learning uh, furniture and the one the other ones and dodge into tailoring and some other skills they however urged the government to provide an enabling environment for the youth to harness their potentials for economic prosperity jimmy azandi trust tv news makodi on the international scene russia has vetoed efforts to keep a team of united nations experts in mali who had accused foreign fighters of involvement in widespread abuses in the military-run West African country. 13 of the United Nations Security Council Council's 15 members backed a proposal on Wednesday that would have extended sanctions for one year on Mali and would have kept the experts in place. But Russia exercised its veto power at the United Nations meeting to block the extension proposal led by France and the United Arab Emirates Russia's UN ambassador Vasily Nabenza said the sanctions were first put in place in 2017 to support a peace agreement in the long troubled country. Now, Russia proposed extending the sanctions for one final year but wanted an immediate end to the independent monitoring team. Western powers have accused Russia of retaliating against the UN experts after they spoke critically 
about actions by Malian forces and their foreign security partners. In sports, Belgian striker Romelu Lukaku has joined Italian side Roma on a season-long loan deal from Chelsea. The striker returns to Serie A, uh, Serie A having spent last season on loan with Inter Milan, helping them reach the Champions League final. Mourinho briefly managed Lukaku in 2013-2014 season at Chelsea during the, skipper's, the striker's first spell at Chelsea before the Portuguese signed him for Manchester United from Everton back in 2017 for £75 million. After Mark making a £74 million permanent move to Inter Milan from United in 2019, Lukaku rejoined Chelsea for £97.5 million in 2021, but his return proved unsuccessful and he has not played for the Blues since May of 2022. Lukaku did not travel with Chelsea for their pre-season tour of the United States despite having three years left on his contract. Lukaku has previously won the Belgian Championship with Anderlecht, FA Cup and the Club World Cup with Chelsea, the Scudetto, the Italian Cup and the Italian Cup uh, with Inter Milan. Well, that's it for the news update at this hour. Thank you most kindly for joining us. As always, feel free to follow us across our social media platforms for more content and visit trusttv.com for more news. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. Thank you for watching.